Welcome back to the Making the Madness Team Preview Series. Today we are discussing the Richmond Spiders. The starters for the A-10 favorites coming into the season will be point guard Jacob Gilliard at the two, Blake Francis at the three, sharpshooter Nick Sherrod at the four, Nathan Ko, and at the five, Grant Golden. Yeah, just looking at this team, I really like the backcourt. Jacob Gilliard is a superstar. He's the guy you want, you know, in terms of winning, he brings winning to the team. Uh, two seasons ago, led the Atlantic 10 in scoring. Last season decided, hey, I'm not going to try to go out and lead the team in scoring. I'm going to try to win the games or win games for this Richmond team. He became the defensive player of the year in the Atlantic 10. He's a good assist guy. He's a good scorer. Uh, he's just the total package in a player that I would want on my team. Yeah, definitely. Jacob Gilliard is just such a good player. He's a winner. He does everything you want. He's a great passer. He's an elite defender. I believe he led the country in steals last season, 3.2. You hear a lot of people hype up Fats Russell, and Fats Russell is a solid player, good player, I'd even say. But if you're giving me the option to pick between Fats Russell and Jacob Gilliard, I'm taking Jacob Gilliard 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, I don't think that's a question I'm going to debate much because I would say... I would also be taking Jacob Gilliard. Uh, Blake Francis versus Fats Russell might be a different thing. Francis is certainly a good scorer. He really took over as the main guy, at least scoring-wise, for this Richmond team. Led the team with 17.7 .7 points per game. Uh, he's just a really good overall you know, scorer, shooter, and he's, he's someone that obviously is going to be big for this team. And then they have Nick Sherrod as well at the guard spot, who's an elite shooter. That's a three-headed monster that most teams just don't have. Yeah, definitely. Francis coming into his first season for the Spiders last year after spending two seasons at Wagner. He shot 36% from deep last season, led the Spiders in scoring. You look at the change from 2018 to 2018-2019 to 2019-2020, what's the biggest difference? They added Blake Francis. And then... At the five, Grant Golden, he's one. His stats don't look like, you know, he's as impactful as he actually is. They run a lot of offense for him, too. He's a great passer. And his points per game, he's another guy whose points per game went down and the team got better. The unselfishness and continuity of this team is something you can't teach. Wanting to win rather than having individual uh, accolades and stats is something that will carry you you know, a lot, and you look at last season, the National Player of the Year was Obi Toppin. He had worse stats than Luke Garza, but his team was better, and he won National Player of the Year. I would put Jacob Gilliard firmly in the National Player of the Year race, and I could see Gilliard, Golden, Francis even being uh, all A-10 first-team guys this year. Yeah, and you mentioned with Grant Golden, he's just a really, he's a good interior scorer. He's, you know, really efficient at well as well he's a good free throw shooter uh and then you know he's a good rebounder he you mentioned he can pass he can block shots he can you know force turnovers he's a big man you want on the team and then nathan Cayo is a kind of undersized four man but he's gonna be really good for this team uh he's not really a three-point shooter but he's a good free throw shooter he's a good you know he's an efficient score inside so He's someone that can, you know, as a fifth option, he's not a bad fifth option on any team. Yeah, KO, another senior. This is a team with five senior starters. This is a team that can absolutely make a Final Four this season, and the Spiders need to be on your radar entering the season. Coming off the bench for the Richmond Spiders will be Tyler Burton, Andre Gustafsson, Connor Tr Crabtree, Andre Weir and Dehe Bailey. Uh, I I just think the players I really like. Connor Crabtree is a really good uh, player, as well as Gustafsson. Uh, Gustafsson uh, started a few games. He's a six-four guard. Uh, can kind of come off the bench. He can create some offense. Not really a shooter, but you know can kind of come in and be a player that can score for the team. Yeah, definitely Crabtree, a knockdown shooter on that Green Wave team a couple of seasons ago. 
and uh, Jamon Bailey, as I believe has pronounced, but on the Richmond team website, it says DJI, so I'm guessing that's his nickname. So I'm going to go with uh, Jai Bailey is maybe how he pronounced it. I'm guessing the D silent. Maybe I'm wrong. But either way, he was originally committed to Wake Forest, and following the departure of Danny Manning, he reopened up his recruitment and headed to Richmond. He's a 6'5 combo guard who will definitely play some bench minutes for this team. And Tyler Burton's a guy off the bench last season who played a pretty significant role, and he will look to do that once more. This isn't an like 10 11 deep team but they're definitely nine deep i would say and you know that carries you enough into march with how good the starting five is yeah and i i still think that we've we've touched on the starting five that's who you're going to go out and with those five guys and that's who's going to win you the games in march but certainly as atlantic 10 play goes along having some of these players that can come off the bench that can you know provide some additional offense can you know play their roles that's going to be something that they need to kind of you know springboard them into the NCAA tournament as a high seed and as potential Atlantic 10 champions yeah I couldn't agree more so there were no real significant departures for this Richmond team uh, which leads to the final segment which is what can we expect out of this team uh I think they can win the Atlantic 10 coming into the season. They're going to be the favorites to win the Atlantic 10, and it's because of that starting five that's just returning everyone from a team that, yes, Staten ran away with the Atlantic 10, but Richmond was an NCAA tournament team, the only uh, team from the Atlantic 10 not named Dayton to be an NCAA tournament team. So I think they're going to be really good this season. I think they're the A-10 favorites. Yeah, I, they're far and away my A-10 favorites. I have them as a top-10 preseason team, which is, you know, a lot different than what most people have. But at the same time, I'm ranking based off what I think they'll be, and I'm not looking at other uh, riders like John Ross, you know, as I'm like 40th in the country. I don't really, you know, base my rating rankings off of what other people have. And I think that's, you know, why I have Richmond where I have them. You just, other than them in Wisconsin, who, by the way, they beat last season, Wisconsin was without Micah Potter for that game, but they beat them pretty uh, by a pretty good margin, I believe. And those are the two teams that really return everybody, I feel like, with all the five starters being seniors. I just think that overall, it, you can't teach that. You can't teach leadership. You can't teach continuity. You can't teach experience. And Richmond is likely slated to play Kentucky in a multi team event, also featuring Detroit Mercy and um, Hartford. And I think Richmond will absolutely play Kentucky tough, and I think they beat them. And that need, that will likely put Richmond on people's maps. Yeah, if you, you go out, and they'll, that will probably be a road game at Kentucky, although who knows if there's fans in the stands. But if you can go out and beat Kentucky, uh, that puts a that puts a state that's a statement win that can carry some momentum into the NCAA tournament which leads to the final point you've said you have them as a top 10 team can they make the final four this season absolutely I think they can make the final four like is the two keys to winning I if I've said it once I've said it a million times I'll continue to say it for as long as I am uh in this industry uh so the two keys to winning in March is guard play and leadership. I mean, and continuity kind of thing that goes together with leadership in a sense. But you look at teams that have won it recently, Virginia, Kyle Guy, Ty Jerome, great guard play, and then leadership with them, DeAndre Hunter. Jack Salt was even a pretty big leader on that team. And then the previous season of Villanova, Jalen Brunson was – the national player of the year and a great leader those are just things you can't teach yeah and then you mentioned kind of another team that makes the final four kind of by surprise Loyola Chicago uh, I believe with the exception of Crutwig and Clayton Custer that team was pretty much all seniors and yep. Custer I think was a junior and on that team so like having experienced veteran guards is what you need to do to have in order to win, and Richmond certainly has that. Yeah, good call on Loyola Chicago there. I mean, you're right, Custer is a junior. Crutwig was a freshman, 
So that's kind of out of the ordinary, but he wasn't their go-to guy for sure. Custer, Marcus Towns was a senior, I believe. He might have been a junior. I think he's a senior, though. Da- uh, Dante Ingram was a senior. That's the kind of thing that can carry you. And even in these, the A-10 is a much bigger conference than the Missouri Valley Conference. But it's just, you know, I just think that if you're telling me right now I can pick one team out of Kentucky, Richmond, Duke, and who's another young team we could pick here? Uh, not Kansas, like... I don't know, let's just say Kansas for Louisville. the sake of not think. Louisville, yeah, sure. I like Louisville a lot, but let's go with... I would take Richmond out of those four teams without a doubt. To make, If I had to pick one to make the Final Four, I'm picking Richmond. Yeah, I, I still think talent does play a major factor, which I, I would count out a team like a Duke or a Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky especially if they get Olivier Saar, but certainly Richmond. Right now, you asked to, if... They play the NCAA tournament before anyone plays a game. Richmond would certainly be a team that has all the chance to, you know, even win a preseason NCAA tournament. If they decided uh, Bob Huggins' strategy of uh, playing the NCAA tournament as the uh, start day of the uh, college basketball season, Richmond would be very dangerous in that tournament. Yeah, definitely. And at the same time, while you mentioned talent, this Richmond team is, like, very talented, though. Like, if you if, – like, obviously it didn't happen. I'm glad it didn't. But let's just say Jacob Gilliard and Grant Golden and Nick Sherrod and Blake Francis all decided to transfer, they would all be at Power 5 schools, like, top-end Power 5 schools. Jacob Gilliard could have had the pick of anywhere. Same thing with Golden. Francis, I think, could have went pretty much anywhere, and Sherrod probably – you know, maybe not anywhere, but he could have definitely been to a big name school. When you have guys who can be a star on a big time conference team all together on one mid major team, I think that is huge. Definitely.